Jordan here from Crossbow Printables and today we're going to be setting up a budget together. So I'm going to be doing that using these new six month budget inserts that I've just released in my shop. Um, but the most important part of this video is to just teach you how to budget if you're not used to doing it. So you can use dot grid inserts or a spreadsheet, whatever works for you, but I do also have these available if you want it specifically for this process. So they're an A5 personal size and pocket size. Once you start budgeting, you'll never go back and I would love for you to try it for the first time if you've never tried it. So first let me just show you through the, the five step process that is a monthly recurring process for the next six months and then um, we'll go through together and put some figures in so you can see exactly how it works and you can get your own budget set up. So on the front page there's a space for financial goals. I think it's really important to set out with a goal so that you've got something to work towards and also a bit of motivation to stay disciplined um, so you could put a quote or something there or a reward that you might get if you reach your goal. There's a savings tracker here for a few different categories, so if you're saving for a car or a holiday fund for example. Um, if you're using these inserts I do also have the option to add another savings tracker onto the pack because I'm aware that some people do save for more than two things. So then the first month let me just walk you through the process so there's a finance calendar for writing all the events and bill dates that affect your month there's a bill payments that is so that you can write down the payments that you're going to be making for the coming month and then also tick them off once you've made them so you know where you're at and then after doing that you can set up your budget so fixed expenses variable expenses and i'll go through that with you in more detail later on this is a really special unique expenses page which I think is important for sticking to your budget. It's categorised expenses so you write down your expenses here, you write down what category that is in from your budget, say for example groceries or clothes shopping and then you can write down your category balance from your budget so if you just spent £10 on some groceries and your budget was £150 you know you've got £140 left. So once you've finished that month you would go back and write in how much you actually spent before the month review page which is at the back of every month so that you can see your final figures for the month and then you've always got them to refer back to and also you can break down everything by category so this is something that I do personally and I, and I find it really important because the more data you can get about what you're spending the better you can make your decisions about oh maybe I'm spent, like my percentage of my income is too much on going out for example, maybe that doesn't reflect what I would like to be spending my money on. Um, so you can reflect on that there and then write down some action steps for next month. So that repeats then for two, three, four, five, six months and then hopefully at the end of the month, uh, the six months you've achieved all your goals financially and you'll be telling your money exactly where it should be going. So let me go through and actually set this up with you. Um, so I'm going to be using some made up figures and then I'm going to go through exactly how I'd budget for the month so that you can follow along because I know it can be a bit tricky when you're first starting knowing exactly what to do. So here we go. So at the start, um, let's say you are planning for the next six months. So for example, main financial goal for this period. So Oh, one thing I forgot to say as well is that there is also the option with this plan and pack to add on a debt payments page because I know some people are working their way out of debt and that just tracks how many debt payments you are making. So your goal might be to pay off a few thousand pounds worth of debt um, or to save for a holiday or to put money in savings for a house. So for me, I'm going to write down I would like to save £3,000 towards a car this over the next three months. Okay, and then my motivation to stay disciplined. M uh, mine and my husband's quote is, we live like no one else now so that we can give like no one else later. So I'm gonna write that down here. Great, so onto the savings tracker. So let me just talk you through a few things that you could be saving for if you've never budgeted before. So 
my husband and I, we have a car fund, so we figured out exactly how much um, our insurance and maintenance would cost throughout the year. We divide that by 12 and we keep a car fund. And it's just a way that the big expenses don't come and jump out at you and scare you at the wrong time. So we have a car fund that I can write in there and our target might be £150 a month for that. And then in the bottom one, I'm going to write down um, £3,000 for a car we're hoping to save for the next six months. So per month, that would be £500 for the next six months. So, um, oh, and also we'll be using the extra savings tracker sheet because we also keep a holiday fund to save for holidays and we also uh, do some mutual fund saving as well. So I'm going to write a few things down and then we'll move on. Great, so as we go through the next six months, whenever we save, we can write down in here and keep track of the balance of those savings accounts. Okay, so month one. So let's say this was for last month, which is March 2020. So the first step is the financial calendar. So what I'm going to do in here is write down every single thing that will affect my budget so that I can refer to this when I'm going to be setting my budget in a minute. So this includes events for the next month, bill payment dates so that you've got a visual of when they can come out, um, and birthdays for gifts and anything else that affects that. So now, no matter where we are in the month, I can see what payments are about to come out and I know whether I'm in a good position or not. So the next one is bill payments and the point of this one is so that you can just tick off the bills once they've been paid in case you need to manually pay them or if they're about to come out again you can see when they are going to be due and you can tick off when they're paid or not so you know whether they've come out of your balance or not. Great, so I've written some bill payments in there and the great thing about this is that for things that you might pay quarterly, um, for example like TV license or water, you can just flick to the months ahead and put those in the bill payments then so that you've got a record of when they're going to be taken out. So now we've done the preparation, we can now move on to setting your budget. So these two pages that we've just done are really going to help with this because they just give you an idea of what you've got coming up. So I know I've got two birthdays so I need to budget that for gifts. I know I'm going to an overnight stay in Leeds so I might need to budget a bit extra for going out, etc. So um, fixed expenses are everything that is a fixed bill for the month so you know exactly how much it's going to be and when it's coming out. And then variable expenses are for anything else, so anything that can vary at all. So petrol, groceries, clothing. So first let me fill out the fixed expenses and then we'll move on to variable. And of course also write down everything that you expect to be coming in and then you can write down the total income down here. Great, so that is the fixed expenses done. So next on to variable expenses. But first just a note of the kind of budgeting that I do which I would really recommend and it's called zero budgeting. And it means that for every pound that you've got coming in you figure out where to put it on the budget and you assign it a task. So um, you've not got loads of leftover money that you think, oh I'm just gonna spend this on so and so. You give it a purpose, maybe you put it in savings for a holiday or give it away to someone or anything like that. But it means that you're telling your money where to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm going to total up my fixed expenses for the month so I know how much I've got left over going in to do my variable expenses. Great so now I know that I've got £1,642 left to spend on savings and variable expenses. So the kind of things that are in variable expenses would be groceries, petrol, going out, haircut, clothes, etc, etc. Um, and how we decided what to put in for this is we, we calculated an average when we first set a budget of what we were spending for the last few months and we decided whether we were happy that, with that amount, whether we thought it should increase or whether we short, thought it should decrease. So once you've done that you sort of realise how much you're spending each month and then it gets easier to set budgets for the next month because you can refer to your previous budget from the last month. Um, so I'm just going to write down some of these very expenses now. Great, so I've put in a few, well, most of our variable expenses for this fake budget. Um, and just a few things to 
remind you if you haven't set a budget up before is anything you can think of that you're going to spend you want to put it down here and the reason that we do this is because it just it cuts out all impulse purchases basically if you see some clothes that you would like to buy um, and then you think well I've not put it in my budget then you can think about it for a bit put it on the budget for next month and you're not suddenly spending money that you might re not realize but you might not have that money to spend this just makes sure you realize that you've thought through the purchases that you're making so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to total up all of this I'm going to add it together with my total of the fixed expenses and I'm going to see how much I've got left for our savings so the total of that now plus the total of this I'm just using pencil so that I can rub it out later this is just so that I can work it out for now so that means um, the income minus all our expenses so far 865 so that means that we've got 865 pound left over after everything that we need to spend so we can decide now what we would like to do with this extra money for us we like to save it so going back to my goals at the beginning of the beginning of the year and also the beginning of this month we'll probably put some in a car fund for a new car and then also put some in a holiday fund so I'm going to also add those to my budget Great, so that means that our whole budget now equals zero. So that's a zero budget. And just to make you aware that this is this is how I budget. There's obviously a million ways to budget, but this is how I use these budgeting pages. And it, it's worked really well for me. And I hope it works for you too. Also, just to say, you may have to adjust this throughout the month um, if you've got some unforeseen expenses, but that's okay. Just come back, make sure you've agreed on a new amount and uh, you can just cross it out or you can write these initial figures in pencil so that you've got that room to change it. Um, and also just to know if you haven't got an emergency fund set up, that's a really, really helpful thing because then when things do happen that, you know, maybe something bad happens in the house, you've got the extra money there to be able to pay for that without affecting your monthly budget. So an emergency fund, if you don't know, is three to six months of your living costs. Um, so you could use this sort of budgeting thing and you could save one of these for an emergency fund and I would really recommend doing that if you haven't already. So next is the expenses pages and this is sort of the boiler room of the budget. It's where you make sure that you're keeping on track and you're not going over how much you've set yourself to spend. So how it works is whenever you've got an expense so you could just bring your bank account up and maybe write down your expenses either every day or every week whatever works for you. So write the expense down in this column, say for example groceries, write the amount, £30 maybe, write it that it's from the groceries category and you set £150 for that budget this month minus £30 so you've got £120 left to spend and you write it in the category balance. So you keep doing that make sure you're pulling the categories from the budget page so that you're keeping on track with your spending and you know how much you've still got to spend over the rest of the month. So let me just fill down a few expenses so I can show you. So I've just seen that the mortgage payments come out for example so it means that I can now write the actual figure in and it was the same obviously as a forecasted one. I can also tick off the mortgage payment here. The point of this is that by the end of the month you've filled in all your expenses and you've seen how much you're spending and you've also seen how much your actual column will be. So at the end of the month you can then go ahead and fill out, so the bills will obviously be the same as you forecasted them to be, but you can fill out how much you did actually spend in those areas so that you can see whether you're on budget over budget or under budget and you know exactly where you stand. After you've done that you can go ahead and fill out these columns. The actual income was obviously £3,000 and then how much you did actually spend and what pressure I do, my husband, um, we wait until the end of the month to transfer out the savings that are optional in a sense, so not the car fund but these extra ones um, just so that we've got that buffer in case we do have some higher expenses that we didn't expect. So that's how you would do that and then once you've finished everything, you've calculated all your actual totals, you can do your monthly review page. This is my favourite page in many ways because it's a way of just 
summing up everything that you've spent in terms of percentages and totals and it just gives you a little bit of data so that you can figure out how you're spending your money and whether you're happy that it's going there. So it's pretty self-explanatory, you write in your total income, so total expenses I'm going to write in in terms of fixed and variable expenses, not my savings, but because um, I can write my total savings there. And then if you've also been paying off debt, you can write that there. So let me just do that now. And then after that, you can write the total spent in each area. So I've put some areas down here that I thought you would might like to track. So for example, housing bills, savings, givings, some of the important ones. But you can also, if you've got specific categories that you want to look out on, you might know that you, you spend quite a lot in those areas. You can write those down. So the percentage is a really easy sum, and I've just put it underneath there. It's the total spent in that category divided by the income times 100 and then you can also write here to keep a quick track on when you're under budget whether you're on budget sorry or over budget in that area great so i've filled out these and i can have a look at my percentages and well, seeing as this is a fake budget, I've been very good this month. I've been on budget on most things. Um, but you might see some patterns here, and you might see that you're going over budget in certain categories every single month. So you can then either increase your budget because it might be essential to, or you can just take a few steps to cut back on these things. And the percentages I find are really helpful because they can just show where the bulk of your money is going. So I could look at that and think, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, but maybe 12% on transport, is that too high? Is there something we can do about it? So that you can just analyze how much you're spending. And as well, another good thing that this sheet is for is you can look back at any month and think, well, in January we saved this amount and we spent this amount, and it's just a really handy tool to have to be able to go back and check out your finances in that way. So my final point each month is just to reflect on what we've done this month and take a few action steps for next month. So that's a full month of budgeting complete and then that repeats and it's just the same process each month. So I hope it doesn't seem like a lot of work because realistically it takes like I don't know, half an hour to set up your budget and I don't know, if you just if you just do it in small parts throughout the month it's um it's not a big task, but it is the rewards are just massive. So I really hope that helps you and I hope I would love to see your guys' budgets that you set up and I'd love to hear if it's helped you. Um yeah, and thanks for watching and I'll see you all guys soon.